hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here. I'm from KelbyOne.com, which is an online educational community for people who want to get really good at Photoshop. And let's get really good at Photoshop today because we're going to look at one of these buried treasures. And I'll show you what the problem is, what the solution is, and then I'm going to give you an alternate. So here is my problem. And this just happened to me yesterday. This is the size I need to use, the image that you see, this white blank image. This is the exact size that I need for my blog for a feature photo. So when you come to the blog, you know, you have a big picture up at the top. Well, this is the exact size it needs to be. So I very often have to take a photo like this one here, copy and paste it into there. Okay. So let's do that. Let's select all. All right. And do a simple copy and move over here and hit paste, right? Simple copy and paste. Now it's way too big to fit into that square. So we're going to go to free transform. We're going to press command T if you're on a Mac, control T if you're on windows. And of course, because it's so much bigger, you can't actually reach the handles. So there is a keyboard shortcut you can use that will automatically resize the window so you can reach all of the handles all the way around. That's not what this tip is about. So consider this a bonus tip. The keyboard shortcut on Mac is Command-0. On Windows, it's Control-0. And you can see it just resized the window. So now I can hold the Shift key and get my image in here. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better. So here's what the problem is. The problem is this. Uh, if, if I get this to where I can see the bottom, it cuts off the top, right? You don't want that cut off. And I want to see the whole uh, bottom of it, and you're not going to get to unless I scale this down to actually fit, and then it looks right. And there's the gap of space up here that I want, all right? So there, it's okay. It's the right size, but you have this big gap on the side, and I can't leave that gap because the image has to be this size for it to work on my blog. So I could stretch it. Oh, God, it looks horrible. Of course it does. So let's just hit Escape. <laughs> like the way I named it Escape. Uh, and let's just, here, get this back to where it was supposed to be. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Doing this, like, really the long way. All right, so there's the size it should be. Hit Return. Now, instead of just stretching it, which looks awful, we're going to use this very awesome feature, part of a buried treasure inside of Photoshop called Content Aware Scale. And what that means is it is going to resize the image, but it's going to be aware of the content. And it does it so smartly, like it knows there's an important thing here. So don't stretch that. This stuff over here, not important. It's okay to stretch that. Watch. Seriously, is that amazing? So this way, it doesn't mess up the important thing in my photo. I can hit return or enter to lock that in. It would be enter on Windows. Um, and boom, you're there. It stretched the background, and, and it's just awesome. Now, there are a couple other techniques while I've got you here I'm just going to let you know about. Uh, let's go and undo that, and I want to show you another thing you can do. Now, in this case, it did a really good job of recognizing exactly what the thing was. Well, sometimes you might have multiple objects. One's more important than the other. How is Photoshop to know which one's the most important? You can take the lasso tool or any tool that you're comfortable in using to make a selection around this, right? Like that. Say, so don't stretch that. Go to the channels palette and then go down here and click the second icon here and it makes a new alpha channel right there in the shape of your selection. Now you can deselect. So when you go next time, here let's go back to the layers panel. Next time when you go to content aware scale, you will have a new choice. If you look under protect by default, it doesn't use any, you know, it just does its thing automatically. But you made an alpha channel. You can go choose protect alpha one. And now what it will do is whatever's inside of there, it'll try to make sure it protects that when you go. It's like you told it this is the important thing. The last part of this is let's undo that. The last part is this. If there is a person in your photo, if there's an actual photograph of a person, of course, we don't want to stretch them. Then you click the little people icon, which is beautifully drawn in exquisite detail. Anyway, you click on that up there and it will help you. All right, so now how does this apply to us? Not everybody has this blog problem, right? Well, the problem that we do run into is that uh, sometimes we have to make our photo fit on eight by 10 paper. And for reasons I don't even want to go into on this video, if you go to Walmart or Target and you want to buy a frame, they still think everyone in America is using 
a film camera and all of our paper is, is film size instead of the actual digital size. Who has an old film camera anymore? Who's going to target? Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let's pull it together. <sighs> Think happy thoughts. Okay, so what we're going to do is if you have a situation like that, that's where you're going to use this. If you're trying to fit an image that has to go on 8x10 paper because it has to fit in an 8x10 frame, that's what you're going to use this for. That's one of the biggest things I wind up using content aware fill for is to fill when you have, because you know how it is with, when you try to fit it into an eight by 10, you're either going to have to pull it one way or the other. It's either going to be this way. It's going to be gaps on the bottoms or gaps on the sides. So at least now you know how to get around it. You can always go to content aware scale and usually it will do a pretty amazing job of helping you get past the problem. So there you have it, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope you'll go over to kelby1.com and check out what we've got for Photoshop. Go to kelby1.com slash Photoshop, and it talks just specifically about the Photoshop stuff we have, uh, of which we have literally hundreds of classes on Photoshop. Hope you check it out. Okay, guys, we'll catch you next time. Take care.